Hi, Ken. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Paul. Hello, nice nice to meet you. Yeah, how are you doing? Very well. So can you give us a brief introduction to Sorry We Missed You? And what was the genesis of this film? Where did the story come from? You're first. Um, well, we wanted to tell a story about family after Daniel Blake. You know, a mum and a dad examine work, the effect it has on a young teenager and a young girl, Liza Jane, who's 11 and a half. So what we do is just really, it's a portrait of this family that we hope people will enjoy spending time with, seeing their relationships, seeing their work, see how the family logic unfolds, and especially to examine the relationship between work and the family life. And what attracted you to telling this particular story? Um, it, it's an important, it's a, it's a story that 100,000 people know and live, but nobody talks about it. Um, it's like it's a secret we can't, we can't discuss. But it's transformed the lives of families in 20, 30 years. The change from secure working, um, eight-hour day, 35, 40-hour week, time with your kids, time to get a house, you know, security. That's transformed into two-thirds of the, in the last decade of, of ordinary jobs are, are insecure jobs. And that's hugely transformative. But it's reflected in the family, as Paul said, reflected in the family. Because at work you put on a happy face, don't you? You keep going. When you get back, you're knackered. You've no patience, fractious, stressful, and families really struggle. So that we just felt it was a story we should try and tell. And, you know, a lot of your films do have a social consciousness about them. What do you think the power of cinema is, you know, to affect change or at least expose people to the reality of life for others? Um, it, well, it can take you into the private moments of people. I mean, there's a statistic, I just gave you a statistic, two-thirds of jobs, new jobs, uh, precarious jobs. But you, that doesn't mean anything because you haven't met any of them. So here's a family going through that. And, and you see the, the stress and the, it, it makes it meaningful, you know. And for those who are living it, Maybe it's valuable that somebody recognises that, you know, and it gives you strength that somebody says, well, yes, that's my situation, and I, I'm, I can see it a bit more clearly now because I've seen it on screen. And I think sometimes as well, you just been, it's important to see ourselves up on screen, you know, not just people with American accents who are lawyers or doctors or policemen and CIA and all this stuff, just to see ordinary lives un unfold on the screen. And, um, and you mentioned what change it can make. Well, it's very interesting because with Daniel Blake, there was a lot of discussion, a lot of debate. It was mentioned in Parliament a lot, a lot of times, but we're still left with the food banks and we're still left with a punitive system and nothing has changed for the lives of people like Daniel Blake. Um, so unless there is political change, it's not going to, it's not going to change the lives of the people who are living this. So I, I, hope, I hope the film raises a few questions at least. Fantastic. Lovely to meet you both. Thank you. Thank you.